Well, we had said 1.30ish to start back. We're a little early. Is that okay with you all? Just so we're on the same page, I wasn't sure if I was going to get through my whole message this morning, and I thought just in case I can plug that in for our challenge this afternoon, we made it through all of my points. So really, all this service right now is going to consist of is our songs, some testimonies if you want to share some testimonies, some favorites if you guys want to pick some favorites. We're going to hear from our kids' choir. That's, that's our Wednesday night kids' club is going to be uh, singing. We'll have a little presentation that's about 10 minutes of a video that we get to see. Some of you have said when you've heard about all that's been going on downstairs, we want to go downstairs on Wednesday nights. And it would have kind of hurt my feelings except I was one of the ones saying, I want to go down there on Wednesday nights. So we get a chance today, this afternoon, to see a little bit, a 10 minute video, just kind of of what their program has consisted of. So we'll, we'll do that, we'll have some testimonies, and that's pretty much it. So it doesn't have to be really long. You won't fall asleep with my preaching because I won't be preaching. We will have some testimonies though. But let's start with hymn number 474, I'd Rather Have Jesus. We'll sing all three verses of 474. to us than anything this life has to offer. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for this opportunity that we have today just to reflect on your faithfulness to us, your goodness to us, your value that we should hold you in in, in our lives in high regard. And I pray that that would be true of us. I pray that we would value more than anyone and more than anything else. We thank you for this service time. We ask that you would bless it, that you would use it. In Jesus' name, amen. 
If you're in your hymn book, our next hymn is just one page over, Living for Jesus. We'll sing 475. We'll sing verses uh, 1, 2, and 4 of 475. testimony they would like to share, something that God's been teaching you or doing in your life, something that you would like to share. I think we can all reflect on how good God's been to all of us over these 58 years or however many you've been here with us. Yes, Mrs. Coffey. Uh, I'm just reminded today of all these years when we were here during the so thankful and praise God for his faithfulness. And I think of, you know, as people go through my mind, people that are here now and people that have been here in the past, 
lots and lots of struggles and painful things that we went through in many different lives. And uh, I just praise the Lord for my husband. I know he struggled and, and sorrowed and prayed and prayed and prayed through difficulties that people have had. And um, thankful for so many here right now in this room that went through struggles, but the Lord gave them direction and the Lord uh, restored them and helped them in finding the answers that they were searching for. And I'm just thankful for God's faithfulness. I'm thankful for how he used my husband. Um, how he just got us through those times. When we first started out, we didn't know what we were doing. Exactly. <laughs> we knew the Lord called us here. I just praise him. And that's something that I think is interesting and, and unique to us as believers. Not just that we endure trials, everyone faces difficulties and trials, but that we can say God sovereignly ordains each one, and we can be thankful for those trials, knowing this the trial of our faith worketh, what does the Bible say? Worketh, worketh patience. God has a purpose for each trial. It's hard to see that in the moment, and it's hard in that moment to be thankful for it, but if our sovereign God really is in control, isn't he in control of those trials too? And can't we thank him for those? God's got a purpose to conform us to the image of his son. We can be thankful for those trials. Yeah, It's not that all 58 years of this church ministry have been without difficulties. No, there have been growing pains and trials and heartaches just like real life, just, just like all of us face. But God's in every single one of those trials. And aren't you glad? He's the one that sustains us. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Brandon. I'm very thankful for the visitors we have today. Amen. Amen. And I hope they'll come back. I do too. I do too. <laughs> it's a blessing. Amen. <laughs> Anyone else? I want to thank the Lord for leading Dawn and myself to this church. Mm. It was through Cindy Moore, Tiffany, and their mother, Mrs. Marie. Mm. Well, Marie and I have been neighbors for 38 years. Mm -hmm. And we still stand strong, and there's no friends. Between our yard and theirs. So we just have a path between the kind of Yeah, yeah. We did a trough. I mean, Carlson. <laughs> we did. And uh, we have seen their kids grow up too. They went off to college. They got married and everything. And of course, they saw them over in our front yard. And we had parties over there too. But I want to thank the Lord for leading us here. <laughs> after we had gone through a church separation, not one time, but two times. Mm -hmm. And that church ended up in a third one, even yet. Mm -hmm. So we came here because of Marie. I, I asked her where she, where she was going, and so she invited me to come with her. So I came with her first, and Dawn said, I'm not going to go and get another church family. I'm not going to get, I'm just not going to get nailed down to that. I'm not, I'm just not. <laughs> but, so you see. So anyhow, we became a member of the church here in 1999. Um, and just after that, Donald's daddy passed away in January. That was the year of Floyd. So 99 was Floyd, a whole lot of stuff going on yeah. that year. So the good Lord blessed us. And these people in this church didn't even know us from Adam. They just know we showed up. So when Donald's daddy died, they prepared a meal and came all the way from Rocky Mount to Enfield mm. to share a meal with that family. And him, they still remember that. Mm -hmm. Things like that are blessings to you yeah. at the worst time of your life it seems like yeah so we have been here since 99 and just like Sheila has said there's so many things going on in our in my home and my children's life and my life and Donald's life and it seemed like one time it was just like a bunch of great grapes that just kept coming and coming and coming and all the time it was coming God was strengthening us because yeah. he was teaching us what we needed to know to be godly Christian people to help others not only just in our own home, but all around us in that hospital, to the nurses, to the patients, mm -hmm. the doctors even. And it has, I tell you what, it has just been a learning experience for me. Because, yeah. you know, I, I'll get upset and I'll break down and cry in a minute over Dawn. Now, I just do. <laughs> That's the love of my life. But, but, you know, God seen me through so much and mm -hmm. strengthened me and helped to calm me down and, and, and say, be still my child. <laughs> And that's hard to do at 2 o'clock in the morning when you're <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
when you're not sure what's going to happen to your exactly. husband. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing that bothers me still to this day, the thing of the unknown. Yeah. But it's good that we don't know everything because then when you do get the blessing, you, you're kind of surprised with it and you're thankful, thankful, very, very thankful for all God's done. So I'm just thankful for this church and what it means to me Amen. and to my family. Amen. Was it Corey Ten Boom that said, I can trust an unknown future to a known God? Yeah. And isn't that it? I mean, we don't have to know all the details of our future. We know God and he's in control. Yeah. We don't need to know it all. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Yes, Larry. Well, Joy and I can attest to that same thing that Dale yeah. just said. The love that we felt walking in this door for the first time was just unbelievable. I've never seen it. <laughs> it was the most loving church that anybody could ever come to. Amen. And I'll never forget, when, when they pulled into the parking lot and we got to talk to them, it, it was that very first service. Larry said, we're going to join here. And I didn't want to get my hopes up because I thought, give it some time. You might come back tonight not like what you hear, you know. But the way that the, way that the Lord just drew them to our, our church family, was just it was just of him. And I'm just so thankful for it. It was all the way from California. That's it. <laughs> God was in control of every step of that way. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Just not to be where he wanted us, right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I'm so thankful. Too. Amen. We're, we're very thankful too. <laughs> and that's why I'm not okay with you guys being gone for two weeks. Make it go quick, okay? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Anyone else? The other testimonies? Yes. I know this is my first time here, but I want to give my testimony as well. Um, I'm here with my cousin, Carrie, and Mammy. And I want to say, and I want to piggyback right off what Larry just said that it's just a sweet spirit in this church. It's something that I can't quite put my finger on but I'm going to say it's Jesus. Amen. That's what I'm going to say. Amen. It's Jesus that yeah. I feel in this church and that we feel in this church be my daughter. We thank the Lord <laughs> for being here today. Amen. It's such a genuine and sweet and caring spirit of everyone in this church. I love the way it feels. My daughter loves the way it feels. Amen. Thank you for having us. This would not be our last time. Amen. We won't be back <laughs> once you find a church and you've got people that love on you and yeah. care about you, yeah. you want to be a part of that. And so, Amen. Thank you Amen. for inviting us, cousins, and thank you for making us part of all your activities today. And we're looking forward to joining and coming back again. Amen. Amen. And isn't it neat to find that common bond in Christ? I mean, you can come from California, you can come from across the United States, you can come from just around the corner, and you can be with people that you might not have anything in common with, you might not know their background, but when you love the same Lord, when you serve the same God and read the same book, that's what, that's what unites us, is that common bond in Christ. And aren't you thankful for that? That unites us like nothing else. There's a common bond in Christ that we have that's even closer than a blood relationship. You can be related to someone that doesn't know the Lord, and you'll be closer to a, a fellow child of God than you will be to a family member because of that bond in Christ. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for this. And when we call it a church family, that's what it is. This is a family, and I'm thankful for it. Amen. And we felt like that when we first visited here, when we candidated four years plus ago. Can you believe it's been four, going on five years this next January, four and a half years now. When we first visited, that was the first thing I, I just was impressed by, was just the love of this church family. It just, it felt like home from the very first Sunday, so I'm so thankful for this. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Manny. <clears throat> I thank God for his love, for giving us women. And it's a blessing when, uh, when women sing to the glory of God. It just makes tears flow. <laughs> I wish we had, I know we've got a bunch of them that sing real beautiful in this church. I wish they did it more often. You sign them up and we'll make it happen. You just say, you know what, we need special music. And I threatened that about today. I said, if, if you sing special music or hear someone that you want to sing special music, sign them up. And I'm halfway serious about that. So if we need to have a ladies group, let's, let's, let's just make it happen. How about it? <laughs> And I'm thankful for you, Mr. Manning. I don't know that there's a time that you shared a testimony that the Lord hasn't shown your tender heart through that testimony. And I'm thankful for you. You're a real blessing to us. Anyone else? I'm thankful for barbecue. 
I ate my share of that. I was so full from that, I didn't even get to eat dessert. I was so full from all that good food. Thankful for the good food that God provided today, and thank you for bringing those wonderful desserts and all that wonderful food. The hail's lining that up. It was a real blessing, so thank you. Anyone else? All right, let's stand and sing our hymn of the month. Oh, great God, hymn number 76. We'll sing all the verses of this, all three verses of 76. our young people come.
saying our kid's courageous motto. Be strong and courageous, God's word to obey. Talk about it, think about it, night and day. Should I be afraid or lose courage? No, for the Lord God is with me wherever I go. <coughs> can use people of all ages, can he, to minister to our hearts, and so thankful for those that have worked so faithfully with our kids, Sheila Coffey, Lori, uh, Lori Kagey, Jeremy, Christy, working with the music with our kids, it's a really neat program that they have run so well downstairs on Wednesday nights. Um, I asked Lori if she could kind of write out how I could best explain their Wednesday night program, and she did an excellent job just writing it out here. I'd like to read this of just what their Wednesday night program this summer has consisted of. This is what it says, The Secret Church in China. This summer, our Kids Courageous group has been exploring what it is like for our fellow Christians in China. Due to the increasing climate of suspicion and persecution, many true Christians are forced to meet in secret churches and are closely monitored by the Jing Cha, the Chinese police. We heard many stories of discrimination and increasing persecution for those who refuse the government-controlled churches where they are even changing the words of the Bible to support their socialist agenda. Each night, the children would meet in Sutong Square, this room was set up like a market square with three vendors serving food and drinks each night. Bubble tea, seaweed crisps, rice rolls, ginger candies, assorted Asian snacks, and green tea among the many treats we sampled. I told you we were missing out, weren't we? With a lot of good old-fashioned popcorn thrown in there for good measure. While they ate their snacks, they lounged on panda and butterfly pillows on the village green while they watched a short video each night about the difficulties our brothers and sisters in Christ are facing there in China. One of the Chinese police was often roaming the halls and stopped by to investigate. He looked suspiciously like Jeremy Kagey. <laughs> we witnessed several interactions between him and a young man named Avery Christian. Early in the summer, the Jingsha resist, insisted that we get a permit to meet in the park and view our videos. We did so, and we were granted permission, but the videos were private, and they were not aware of what we were showing. Though unfriendly and, un and confrontational, the Jingsha never caused any real problems, and Avery even got the opportunity to witness to him. 
During this opening time in the square each night, Mrs. Coffey secretly told each child a password. You'll see this in the video and invited them to a secret service meeting at Wu Chen's Market that evening. There's a storefront set up for Wu Chen's Market. As the children enter, they receive a free fortune cookie with Bible verses hidden inside, which we later find out were being made by the Jing Cha's cousin who had secretly become a Christian. The children give the secret password to the storekeeper and are ushered through a hidden tunnel into a back room for Bible study as the store closes and the lights are turned out. By lamps and with caution, they hear a Bible lesson about standing up in the face of adversity with the same theme of you be the one. If you notice, that's what their shirts read. They were challenged to be willing to take a stand even if it means persecution, either on a small scale with their friends or on a larger scale if our country continues to move towards an unfriendly stance on Christianity. They need to have made a decision to do whatever it takes to send forth God's word and truth. At the end of the lesson, Wu Chen has left coins for each of them to shop in his store. Each night, they're allowed to choose one item to take home with them, as he realizes many of their parents have lost their jobs or have had to play the or have have had their pay docked because of their stand for Christ. This has been a great summer, and we have enjoyed the opportunity to think about our commitment to what we believe, to pray for our brothers and sisters in China and to be thankful for the freedoms that we have. And now we'll just show a brief video that shows uh, some of these things of each Wednesday night.
What do you guys have today? What is that? Boba tea? What's this over here?
You can see how much work has gone into our children's program, can't you? A lot of planning, a lot of preparation, and for this reason, not just to make the program a success, but to communicate truth to these young hearts in a way that they can understand and appreciate. Aren't you thankful for our children's ministry? Don't you wish now that we'd gotten to be down there a little bit more for Wednesday nights to see that firsthand? But thank you so much for all that work that goes into that, that training of our young people. There's, there's really not a more important role in our church than training young people for, for following and serving Jesus Christ, is there? It's exciting to see. Well, now we have some time for uh, some favorite songs. If you have a few favorites, you can maybe take two or three uh, before we close. Anyone have a favorite song that they would like to sing? Yes, Joy. 381. And I'm going to put someone on the spot to play the piano. I'm sorry, I, I guess I didn't uh, warn you ahead of time. 381. This could be anything. If, if our piano player doesn't know it, no pressure, but whoever picks it has to sing a solo. I feel like that's fair. Um, does anyone know Blessed Assurance? I think, I think we know this one. We're safe. Uh, let's sing verses 1 and 3 of 381. Christy, thank you for playing. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> You wanted to sing a solo? No. <laughs> what song did you want to sing, Colby? 36. 36. And almost there. All creatures of our God and King. This is great. Let's sing verses 1 and 5 of 36. I will sing of my Redeemer. Amen. There's lots of reasons to praise God. We've been singing songs all about praise. This one continues. Let's do verses 1 and 4 of 364.
Amen. Our last one that we're going to end on. Buddy, I saw your hand first. 172. 172. Boy, I hope you don't know this one. Wouldn't you like to hear Buddy sing a solo? Yeah. I, I love I did that. <laughs> <laughs> a mighty fortress is our God. Let's stand and sing this one as our last. We'll sing verses one and four of this, then we'll be dismissed. Let's stand and sing. <laughs> that you are to us. We thank you for how good and how faithful you have proven yourself over and over to us. Please help us to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name, amen.